Remember too, your phone should go off at four when you're dealing when you're dealing with teachers and students as a principal, because the parents are going to call as soon as the student gets home from school, and that's going to cause you more agitation and more anger. Wait till the next day. Let the parent calm down. Then when you return your phone call, you have a much better shot of managing them appropriately. So once the managerial function is placed, then the, then the principal has to have the instructional dimension. Here's the deal in, in, in elementary and middle school. Principals need to be an expert on either reading or mathematics. What I had going for me when I transitioned from high school to elementary school was that I knew elementary math pretty much better than anybody that they could, that they could provide. And I had that going for me because most of the people coming from elementary schools that were internally promoted or were elementary school teachers knew the reading curriculum very well. I knew math and technology extremely well. So I was able to provide teachers with support that needed help on it, and then I would just chill in their classroom and watch how they taught reading, watch how they interacted with students, watch how they did different kind of reading styles. I learned within you know a week that I hated popcorn reading. I wouldn't have known that had I not seen teachers actually demonstrate that in a classroom. So this is something that you as the principal have to do. You have to learn and know the curriculum. You have to trust your veteran teachers that are unified arts teachers. That's important as well. I do not know what a phys ed teacher should be able to do. I know if they can engage students, but I don't know everything they're supposed to do. I don't know everything that an art teacher should be able to do, and neither should you. But you should know if they're engaging students and students are having fun. So learn one of the two first, math or reading, make an effort to learn the other subject area, and then transition into science, social studies, and then your unified arts. Those of you that are high school teachers, you have to hold to the fact you have to hold to the fact that as a high school teacher transitioning to a high school principal, you have to be good in your subject area, and you already should be a leader in your subject area before you become a principal. If you're not, there's a problem, and you're probably not going to be an effective administrator. So the inclusive facilitative dimension is showing that the principal brings all stakeholders together, and this is your buy-in component. This is my way of knowing, basically, did you buy into what the superintendent wanted, what the school board wanted, what the school district wanted? Once you prove the other two, you can justify this so clearly because the other two come first. Once you have those, you should have a clear read on what the school needs to improve. So contingency theory. This is a theory you might want to consider for your dissertation. Unfortunately, since we're not doing this book as a required reading, since this is an only an eight-week course, I give you some information on contingency theory, which is basically, you know, something that actually looks at whether or not the technical and environmental core can influence the core work of the organization. So some of you might do contingency theory, and it's a great organizational theory, and it's one that works well in schools. Management should support each other, and it should be organic. It should be built from the ground up, and as it becomes organic, it becomes mechanical, meaning mechanical is not a bad thing. It's organic, and it transitions into mechanical because it works, and everybody in the organization knows that it works. So the environment's dynamic. People work together, but it becomes mechanical, but it becomes mechanical in a good way. So now we have to look at the ways that supports are measured. This is why I think chapter three is so important. Chapter three really looks at how they decided to measure the supports. This is your methodology for the study. So once again, I don't expect you to read this book in an eight week class. Will you? Great if you do, wonderful. But if you don't, um, really look at chapter two and three. It's the only two that I would say I wish I could make you read. So what are the indicators for the study? We're gonna look at each one of these. We're going to look at school leadership. We're going to talk about how the principals lead. Most importantly, it's perspectives from the teacher saying, is the principal effective? Is the program coherent? Does it make sense? Does it meet the instructional goals not only at the state level, but also at the district level and the local level as well? How are parents involved in the, in, in the school? Hell, here's what I think for parent involvement. If you don't have any to begin with, as long as you can get the parents in the school, you're doing a good job. Capacity of professionals. Are they willing to try different things? Are they committed to the school? Do they talk about what goes right and what goes wrong? So then we have the idea of safety. Once again, this goes without saying, we're relating it to mass law, which is a huge theory. If a kid isn't safe in a school, it is your fault as the principal, and it is your fault as the superintendent. You have to provide safety to students and the physiological needs. It's all that you are legally required to provide them with. When parents tell you that you need self-esteem and bullying programs in schools, those are great things, but I'm coming at you from an economic perspective. I would never do a bullying program at the expense of security guards or safety, because you're legally required to provide that. 
Then you have trust relationships, which Brick's idea is trust. It's this notion of teacher-parent trust, teacher-teacher trust, and teacher-principal trust. So that's it for this chapter. This is the basis for the study. The next chapter really looks at how you test the hypothesis for the study, where it's going. I'm hoping to give you a foundation for one of the greatest studies ever on schools, but also show you how you can frame your dissertation based off of this. So use it for both. If there's anything else I can do to help you with this material, please let me know. Thank you.